Hello and welcome back to another episode of playing MotoGP 20 online. It's been a little while since we've done this. I thought we would do it again. And this time we're here at Mugello for the first race. So this should be interesting. But I'm going to do what I always do. Just show the best bits of each race. So I hope you enjoy. So then, like I said, of course, the first race here at Mugello never particularly goes too well for me. I've won here a few times, but I tend to lose, obviously, because you a hard tyre for the rider on pole position. That's what I've gone with as well, because your tyre just gets so, so hot at Mugello. I'm playing as Luca Marini, of course, in this first one. But wait for the lights to go out here at Mugello. Lights out, and away we go from fifth on the grid. Whoa, that Yamaha had a good start. I actually haven't, well, okay, I was about to say I've not been swamped off the line, but I have now. Everybody's come flying past me, as always, a terrible start. I've been sandwiched all oh, between uh, an Idemitsu and a Suzuki, and I've gone so wide because of it. I completely, like, sort of missed my braking zone because I couldn't brake where I wanted to. There's a KTM right in front of me. Oh, he's lagged a little bit into the side of me. I've gone on the grass. Someone on a Vinci. Not on a Vinci, sorry. It's an Intermitsu. Oh, it was a big crash. Many crashes. And I've gone on the grass looking at those crashes. I've somehow not picked up a penalty. Looking behind us, and we've got a KTM behind us. But we're up to seventh place. I don't know where we started. I can't really remember. I think we've lost positions, but... A couple of crashes already on this first lap. It's a good way to get back into online. With some crashes, we've got C. I think that was the Idemitsu Honda that moved over on us a little bit uh, down the straight. So we've got sandwich between the Suzuki. Oh, someone crashed in front of Avocado. C as well. Cut me up a little bit. He went so wide through Zavelli, and I was on the inside, and then he cut back on the inside. I suppose I would argue that that would be my fault, but I was just trying to go through the corner, and he ran wide. I wasn't actually trying to pass him or anything. So there's the Yamaha in front going all over the place off the track, so I'm sure he'll be passed very, very shortly. The leaders have absolutely cleared off already. I'm not surprised because of the amount of carnage. But we are still fighting for a podium spot here. You can see this battle is for third place. C go to the inside of Burn. Is that how it's pronounced? I don't know. We've got him very, very wide. Well, I've missed the apex a bit. I suppose I've not gone in super wide. Oh, there's been a contact gun on in front. He's been hit onto the grass. As we go towards Biondetti, I've not been able to send it on the inside, unfortunately. He sort of cut back to the inside a bit quicker than I expected him to. But we've got the run now down towards Buccini. Up the inside we go. There's contact in front between the Idemitsu Honda and the Fachi Yamaha. And we're going to take that move ourselves up into fourth position. So on the power now then. We are battling for this third place with C. C is weaving all over the place. I have no idea what they are doing. I think they're trying to break the slipstream potentially. But that will have cost them quite a lot of time. Weaving side to side like that as we go on the brakes for San Donato. Then we're closing up to the back. Oh, I thought it was going to hit them up the back then. We've gone... Uh, actually, still managed to get it turned tighter than them, even though they break so early. But somehow we've managed to pull that one off. They've gone wide through turn two through Luke. We're on the inside. We're now going to be on the outside through Poggio Seco. We're out the outside. Can we do it? Big wheelie. Not quite been able to do it there. So, unfortunately, we're still in fourth position for now, but hopefully they'll run wide again through Mat Matarasi. We've not been able to do it, but what about Borgo San Lorenzo? We've got a Quattarara now on the inside of us, and we've been... Well, left absolutely no room there. A good move, I suppose, for the Quattararo. But, oh, the Honda's coming back up the inside. Oh, through Casanova. That's not where you want to be making the move. I'm up the inside through Civelli. The Quattararo on the green there. We're going to be up the inside to the first Arabiata, but I'm not sending that one. That's going to cost me a bit of time. That might lose me the position. And he's hit into me. We've got into the gravel and we're down. Oh, of course that happens. And I've respawned a really bad position as well. Trying to stay off the track. Not getting anybody's way there. So we're now down into ninth place. We've got Avocado behind us. He crashed earlier on, but that was a good little battle for third there. I don't know, really, there's a lot of aggression going on, of course, but he kind of forced me onto the gravel. Well, he pushed me onto the gravel completely, and I, uh, well, I just crashed because of the speed we were going at, of course, and obviously the lean we had as well. So it was my fault for looking at the inside. The Arabi had to one, otherwise, he wouldn't have had a, a run on me at all. But the, the Idemitsu was really holding up that pack, and I wanted to get past him so that the uh, two Yamahas behind wouldn't be able to fight me anymore. So, so we're about to start the final lap then. What's the gap in front? Seven tenths. Let's see what we can do on this last lap. Wukong, 46, has crashed. So that's us up into eighth place now. Oh, C has now gone down as well. This is not over. We've got a good run on Avocado here. We are closing up. He's gone so wide through Casanova. That's going to be straight up the inside then through Civelli. Now we're back behind C again, unfortunately. Uh, so he obviously was quite difficult to pass last time. I don't know if we'll be able to catch him and actually have another shot at overtaking him. But that's both of us down. We would have got the podium then if we just hung on behind him because he would have crashed. Unless he got took out. Don't know what happened, of course. Oh, through Biondetti, we've had an amazing run on him. Surely we're going to have a go. Mr. Comeback's coming on the track. So that's a fight for fifth place. We go into Buccini up the inside. We're on the curb. We've had a little bit of contact there. I'm going to have to let him have that one because we've kind of bashed him out the way. I'm trying to let him back through, but he doesn't seem to be one in the position. So we're looking behind us. 
I'm gonna just... Actually, I think he might slipstream past me anyway. We're gonna just lift off the throttle though and let him through. There we go, he just got in front of us over the line, so sixth place. I think we're gonna take that position like that at the final turn, because of course there was a little bit of contact. So in the end then, we were 12.8 seconds away from the race win. 44.6 as well, actually isn't too bad for me, so I'm getting a little bit quicker at Michello, but we're about a second off the leader's pace, unfortunately, so I don't think we would have got that podium regardless, but such a shame that that good battle for third ended that way. So here we are then for the second race, so we're here at Malaysia and we're on pole position, so that is a combination I like to see. We usually go pretty well here, so I'm hoping that we can avoid any sort of first corner carnage and maybe try and get a, get a pull away victory. I know it's not particularly interesting, but I want to get a win. We're waiting for the lights to go out here then at Malaysia. Lights out and away we go. We're going to get swamped off the line. I absolutely know it. There we go. Flying past us goes a Yamaha and this Honda's going to get past us as well. So we go down towards the first corner. Go sort of stay in the middle. Break nice and early to avoid the carnage. They're all going pretty wide into turn one. I think I might have made it. I've gone a little bit wide though. Yes, I've been the lead. I've kept the lead through the first corner then. So we've got to try and get our head down. Make a bit of a getaway here. What is the gap behind? We'll have to see at the end of this sector. But some of the leaders went very wide. I don't know if they actually crashed at the first corner. We've got Wukong 46, three tenths behind us, so we're not out of the woods yet. Oh, he's going round the outside into the hairpin. That is, that is brave. He didn't quite pull it off, unfortunately, for him. Well, it's fortunate for me, but for him, that'd be quite unfortunate. But it was a good attempt. I'll give him that. If he'd pulled that off, I wouldn't have been too disappointed because it would have been a really good move to see. I like it when people get a bit creative with the passes, that's for sure. So down the straight then, I think he's going to have a pop into this last corner because he seems actually to have a little bit more pace than me so far. There he goes, up the inside, into the final corner. And he's gone in way too wide though, he's lost the front on my screen, obviously not on his, but we've got the lead back then because of that. But he's going to have an amazing run from that far off the circuit, but he did lose a lot, lot of time. So we're leading after the end of the first lap then, looking behind us because he's probably going to look for a move into the first corner. On the brakes then... Oh, I've got the inside, so there's nothing he can particularly do about it then. Although it did just say he overtook me. Oh, yes, he's gone so wide on the map. Look, if you see on the map, he's gone super, super wide. So he's lost a load of time. So that actually might have just given us the break we needed. Because now they're out of slipstream range and I can just focus on my own lines. I don't have to defend or anything like that. As we come down towards the last corner, we're in a similar situation to the previous lap, but it's a different rider this time. We've got a Repsol Honda. He's gone on the inside. He's had a bit of contact with us on the way in. And he's going to run that wide. So I'm going to get the cut back on the inside, on the on the gas. We've got to get on the power. Doesn't matter. I've not got the grip. We had to get on the power. Here he goes. He goes flying past. We've got to duck back into the slipstream because he's had the pace. 57-1 from me. It's not a great lap. He's at a 55-3. We can't compete with that. So as we go into the first quarter then, we've just got to hope that he goes in wide to give us a chance to sneak it back up the inside. He's not particularly gone in wide. We're going to try and look anyway. I think he's going to have this one as we go through turn two. Again, he's wide. We've got the cut back. Come on, yes. We're back into the lead of the race. So someone that's about two seconds a lap quicker than me, I'm going to have to try and keep behind for another three quarters of a lap. I don't know if it's going to happen, but we've managed to cut back underneath him twice so far. And he's just hit me on the back there. I don't know if I moved over on him or whatever, but I was in front, so I could put my bike where I wanted it to, particularly. He's got the cutback this time, so the roll's reverse. I'm now on the inside through turn five. He's managed to hang it around the outside. That was brave, but now he's going to be on a bit of a bad line for turn six, so we can be able to cut it up the inside, potentially on the power on as early as I can. Down towards the next right-handers. Obviously easy to make a mistake on the inside here. We've got on the inside of a bit of contact there. I think I might have nerfed him off a little bit. So again, I don't want to keep the position off the back of that. So we'll see to let him through. He's going to the inside of the hairpin, though. He's made the move stick anyway, regardless of that. But I'm going to have the inside on the curb, almost losing it into him. So this has been an amazing battle on this final lap so far. Just diving it up underneath each other. Of course, he has got a lot more pace than me, so I can't let him lead for more than a corner, really. I'm trying to get the drive. The penultimate turn might be the last opportunity. He's actually just made a mistake as we go into turn 12. I don't know what he was doing there. I think he got caught up on the curb on the outside, so we've taken the lead back once again. As we go to the penultimate turn, I've got him a little bit wide. Is he going to be able to do the move I was going to try and do to him? I don't think so, but he's going to get the power out of here down towards the last corner. Last corner, though, it can be a bit risky because you've got to try and break as late as possible, but you don't want to run too wide and get the guy to cut back underneath you. So he's pulled in front. We're on the inside. What is... Oh, he's completely cut me off, and I'm down on the curb. What even happened there? I've gone down. I've crashed. Try and rejoin the track without taking anybody else out. So it's going to be second place. But he sort of just cut across me a bit there. It was an interesting, interesting line in that last corner. But he got the victory. And I suppose we did have a little bit of contact with him earlier on in the lap. I'll have to watch the footage back to see really what happened with that. It was uh, quite strange. 
So they missed the comeback wins in the end number the 55.3. So there is some fast people in this lobby. The guy behind us got a 56.4 as well. So even though I'm usually pretty good at this circuit, I got a little bit dominated by some of those riders in terms of lap time. So hopefully we can try and get a little bit more of a gap over them in the next race. But I think they're just going to beat me regardless of what happens because, I mean, those times are ridiculous. And just like that, from the best track to the worst track, here at the Chang International Circuit. I'm on pole again, though, so that's nice. But we've still, got, we've still got the same guy from the last race in the lobby, so he'll probably win this one. But a lot of them have left, as you can see. We're losing a lot of people here. But waiting for the lights to go out here at the Chang International Circuit. Lights out, and away we go. Be interesting to see how far off the track some of these riders go. Point is we go down towards the first corner. So I've actually not been taken out the first corner, which is very surprising. You always get dive bombed at the first corner at Chang. We actually kept the lead as well, which I didn't even mention sort of off the line. We managed to keep it all the way down to turn one. Then we didn't get taken out of turn one as well. Turn three, though. Oh! Whoa! Okay, yeah, we've been taken out now. Oh, that completely caught me off guard. That was a horrendous accident. I'm guessing someone just completely forgot to break. Uh, Mr. Comeback is in front of us, the guy that obviously we battled with at Malaysia and had the little contact with at the end. I'm sort of 100% sure what happened with that one yet. I need to watch it back. But I, I sort of dived to the inside at the same time he did, so I think it was sort of a race incident. But he had just completely cut me up on the outside, so I kind of went to the inside to get past him, but he just defended at the same time. We uh, kind of crashed on the curb, I think. But either way, I'm not going to hold any sort of grudges or anything about it, even if, like, it wasn't my fault, but it might have been. Again, I like I said, I need to watch it. Uh, we're fourth place for now, so we can still try and get another podium here. Be interesting to see if he catches up to the back of these other riders, if he can dispatch them. So we've caught up to the back of this guy in third place. He seems to be going very slowly, although he's riding off the track a lot. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, that was kind of strange. He kind of just cut back on the track and then kind of parked it right on the apex. So, I don't know if he's not 100% sure of where the racing lines are, I'm guessing. But he's gone very far off the track. <laughs> very, very far off the track. That's almost David levels of off the track there. Uh, if you know what I'm on about. If, you, if you've seen some of my previous online videos, you will uh, understand that, I'm sure. But we've got this guy in front of us, MPA, Orion. Can we try and pass it? Because we're now in last place. The lobby's literally dropped to four people. So, we might have to look for another lobby after this one, unfortunately. Because this was actually a full lobby at the start of the last race, so um, we've lost so many. We've lost eight people since the start of the last race. Uh, the lap times in front are pretty good, 26s. I've just done a 1 minute 30, which is not good. Uh, so let me try and up my game, see if we can get this. Oh, where is he going? That's completely put me off. I completely messed up the first corner because how wide he went in. I watched him going so wide, I turned him way too early. Completely ruined my run through there. So we need to just try and get my head down. I need to get my head down, try and pass this guy because I, I don't want to finish last. Again, he's miles off the track. That one actually might have hurt him. So we've got the run down towards the left-hander, but he's just going to go so far off the track here anyway. It doesn't matter. I can sort of break where I want because he's just going to... No? Oh, yes, he is. Okay. No, actually, he kept it on the track. I'm quite surprised. That would be the corner where you would have thought you'd gain the most from going off since it's such a fast corner. But he's gone so wide again. It's kind of hard to compete with people when they are just making their own track. That's why I don't like this track very much. Also, it's just not a very good track, but... Uh... You know, that, that's one of the reasons I don't like it too much. And I think we are just going to finish it last here, because there's no way I'm going to catch him now, because I've just made a little mistake as well. So, yeah, this race is a bit of a bust. Down towards the final corner, though. Are we going to look for a move? That goes right up to the back of it. It's not going to quite be enough, though, at the last corner up towards the line. We're very close to him, but it is going to be last place in this one. And, yeah, Paulo Spagro, not too happy with that. I've not really got anything to say about this race. I got obviously completely taken out of the lead and then uh, we couldn't keep up with this guy that, that was just going off the track everywhere. My lap times weren't too good though, so I actually didn't ride too well in that race, to be honest. That's probably another reason why I couldn't get past him. So hopefully the next one is a little bit better. So here we are then, this time at Qatar. And once again on pole position. I'm not sure why the game is loving me so much today. I've been on pole for every race except the first one so far. Uh, someone else just joined the lobby, so we are repopulating this lobby a little bit, but I don't think there's anybody that was in it at the start anymore. But waiting for the lights to go out. Lights out, and away we go here at Qatar. Mr. Comeback has just joined the lobby back, as I said that, so he's back in the lobby again now. But as we go down towards the first corner, then we've been passed by Vinales, we've been passed by a KTM uh, carbon version. Anyway, he's gone in so, so wide, we've been hit off by another KTM. Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Comeback's now left the lobby again, and so has the other guy that had joined. So, 
Once again, another race taken out on the first lap and Dan in last place. I'm hoping it's a little bit better than the last one. Ugh, that was stupid. That was so stupid. I completely just gassed it, just high-sided. I think that might be the end of this race. Oh, this, this session's not going too well for me, is it? Oh, there's been a few crashes at this first corner. We're back in it again. As you can see, the two leaders, not too far in front, and then there's two guys right ahead of me as well. So, despite me being taken out and then having a stupid crash of my own, I'm back in the race. But if I hadn't have had that high side, I would be in the lead. So, that is a little bit frustrating, not going to lie. But again, it's people enjoying the track limits, I think. It makes it actually really difficult to make a pass as well because you don't know where they're going to go. Whereas normally, at least you can kind of predict where a person's going to put the bike because you can see the bit they're allowed to do it on. <laughs> and what is he doing into this corner into turn six? He's trying to go in tight on the inside of the other guy. We've made the move up into fourth place and we're back behind PA Orion from the last race. Although we've got this KTM on the inside. I'm not sure if it's the one that took me out or not. And he's just bashed me out the way again a little bit. So probably was the one that took me out at the first corner. But side by side... I didn't want to go side by side with him for too long there because I was going right towards the grass and I wasn't a big fan of that. On the inside we go though, into turn 10, a nice move that. He's got back on the inside though, I've had to leave him the space, sit the bike up a little bit. So we're in a nice juicy battle here for fourth place, but I want to try and make it into a battle for third, get past PA Orion. Oh, well, PA Orion's now crashed, so now it is a battle for third. Asking you shall receive, I guess, in this lobby. The behind Italiano. He usually plays as Cal Crutch though, he does, so... Uh... A little bit, a little bit different to see him on the KTM. Whenever I see him in the lobby, he always seems to play his cow crutch. Oh, oh, what was that? I guess he's waiting up for the other guy, but he just breaks mid corner. That was so kind of scary. Although he's actually now not waiting up anymore, so I'm not really sure what he did there. But we're up into third place. I think we're a bit too far behind the two leaders ahead of us to pass them because their lap times are pretty good as well. 51.6 is not a bad time. I've done the 51.8, so even with that battling. A little bit, uh, a couple of attempts slower, but I probably could have uh, beat their time if I was in clean air. So picking it up out of the last corner then. Third place it is. Obviously we were too far away from the guys in front. They were about four seconds in front of us. We kept it fairly honest with them on that last lap. I could have ran with them, I think, if I'd not been knocked off at the beginning. But, oh well, these things do happen. And third place, not a bad result, I suppose. Ooh, just missing out on the fastest lap in the end there by 15 thousandths of a second. Very, very close. So you see, I did have the pace of those guys in front of me. And we were 3.4 seconds off the win in the end. So the best we have been for quite a while, probably at all in this lobby, because of course we did crash at uh, uh, Sepang. So that probably put us quite far off the lead as well. So it looks like we get to avenge ourselves from the last race because we're at Qatar once again. However, this time it's not me on pole position. As you can see, that is not me. I'm actually in third place playing as Morbid Deli. So hopefully we can just not get taken out at the first corner this time. We actually might have a shot at the victory here as well. So the lights are on. Wait for the lights to go here at Qatar. The lights are on. Away we go. I think my intro to that race made no sense, but oh well. We've been passed already by Yamaha and the KTM, a carbon KTM. I think it was the one from the last race. So we break for this first corner then. This time we've made it through without being taken out. But I thought, was, I thought that was going to go badly then as that rider went up the inside. I'm going to break nice and early to not get taken out by them. It's PA Orin. Oh, that KTM, the carbon KTM again having a little bit of contact with behind Orion. I don't want to get stuck behind him though, this, this race. We're closing up to him on the inside we go. We've actually made that one stick quite nicely there. Korea is leading the race. RD in front of us. RD G77. Someone look at the inside. Oh. That was close. We break for turn six. You don't want to go in too wide here because you can cut back on the inside quite nicely on the power as early as we can. We've got a really, really good run. Surely we're going to get second place here as we break for turn seven on the inside into second place. So now we are on the hunt of Korea. That is the rider I'm after. They've got a big lead already, so it looks like they've got some good pace. But hopefully we can try and reel them in or maybe they'll make a mistake or something. Not too sure. You can never tell if someone pulls out a lead on the first up whether it's just because of the viewer being held up a little bit. But it does look to me like they have got some pretty good pace. I'm going to put my head down so if I can catch them up. So we're going to see what the, lap, uh, the gap is at the end of this first lap. 1.6 seconds. That is pretty big. And I think someone's going for a move on the inside. No, I thought I heard someone try to get up the inside of me then. Oh, they are there. Oh, they just crashed on my screen, but I don't think they did on theirs. Uh, that is the problem when you're racing with people that are lagging. You don't know if they've crashed or not. I've got him wide. I think that might be him on the inside. No, still not quite. So we're still holding on to second for now. Oh, we've been passed though. He's up the inside. He's done it. He's pulled it off. We're going to have the inside though. Here we go. 
Down towards turn six, are we going to have it? Am I going to be able to swoop around the outside? Yes, I am. So we're back up into second again, but I think this Korea guy is going to get away. And I've just made a big mistake on the exit. That's allowed him back up the inside again. And I've left him way too much space. I've got it so wide. So has he, though. If I hadn't done that, we would have got the position back, I'm sure. A half second behind us to the next rider. Look at the inside. Do we turn nine? Are we going to be able to do the pass into turn ten that I love so much? Yes, we're going for it. I downshifted a little bit late, but we still seem to have got it stopped and got it turned and got it powered out. So uh, that actually worked, even though I messed it up a little bit. But he's back through again as we go into the triple right-handers. He's gone in a little bit wide. Are we going to want to cut back up the inside? I don't want to send it on him through one of the triple rights because that can be pretty dodgy to do. And we've still got someone right behind us as well. We don't want to lose too much time. The leader has absolutely cleared off, so he is ridiculous. But as we go through the penultimate turn, he's made a mistake up the inside. Back up into second position. This is a great battle so far for the second place. Very, very clean as well. Just one one makes a mistake, the other goes through, the other makes a mistake. It's, it's been quite interesting. So as we come up towards the line then, he's right behind me. He's on the Honda as well, although that makes no difference because it's on balance performance. 52-0. So apparently that's fastest lap. So that means the guy in front must have some sort of penalty because uh, he would have done a faster lap. And, the, well, someone's done a 51-2 which is a bit more on the pace of what I was doing in the last race, but obviously with all that battling, we lost quite a bit of time on the previous lap. There he goes up the inside to turn six. Has he got it stopped? No, he's gone in super wide. We're going to get the cutback again on the inside. It's, it is quite difficult to pass here at Qatar, to be honest. Although I know we're going past each other loads, but it's because we go underneath and then run wide. It's actually quite hard to make a clean move stick here without being repassed. Oh, he's onto the penultimate turn. He's made it stick. It was aggressive, but he's got it. We're on the power again. We've got onto the green a little bit. As we go down towards the final turn, we've just got to hope that he runs it in wide. If we can hold a tight line. I've run it in wide, though, as well. I've not held a tight line. We're going to try and get the cutback on the inside. A bit of a wheelie. As we come up towards the line, though, we're going to get a bit of slipstream off him. Can we try and get this second place back? He's gone all the way onto the grass. I don't know what he's doing, but I think that's allowed us to position as we go over the line. Second place, I think we just did it. And the leader crashed as well through the celebration over the line. So I think we just grabbed second, but an amazing race here at Qatar. Much better than the first one. Yeah, so we did just nick it at the end there, and we were only half a second off the leader, apparently. How big of a penalty did that guy have? Wow, he was miles in front. And at the last lap as well, doing 51-2 and a 51-1. That was good. <laughs> so it was a good, good last lap battle and good lap times as well. But how that guy only won by half a second, I'm not really sure. So we're back again at Chang. So we've gone Chang, Qatar, Qatar and back to Chang again. So these two races featured quite heavily in this video. But they were actually not the best races when they came up the first time. So hopefully this will be a better one. Just like the, the second Qatar one was better. But waiting for the lights to go out here then... Lights out away, we go off the line. Obviously, we led into the first corner last time. This time, that's not going to be the case because we're not on pole position. We're down to second place. A bit of a lag spike there. As we go through the first corner, though, people all over the place. I missed my braking turn because of that as well. And there we go. Here comes an Aprilia flying up the inside. So we're down to fourth. We've got the run on this KTM. I'm going to try and go around the... Well, I was going to try and go around the outside then. Just thought better of it. Obviously, we got completely took out here last time at this corner. Oh, there's been a contact in front. So that gives us a second position. Then there's RDG77 in front of us. If we can get our way past him, we'll be up into the lead of the race. But of course, last time we were at Chang, I wasn't able to pass someone that was quite a bit slower than us. Around the outside goes that KTN. That was quite a good move there. I ran in really, really wide as well. So how he managed to actually get around the outside. Oh, I know. He's just crashed on the grass, though. So from hero to zero, just like that, Shoei goes down. The helmet manufacturer on the ground. And we're back up into second, and my target once again is RDG77. He's got in super wide into the last corner. He's going to lose so much time as we come up towards the line. He's coming back onto the circuit. Try to get a bit of a slip stream. One tenth behind him, then, as we go down towards the first corner, going to break nice and early. Don't want to go in too wide into there, which I think he has done. So he's going to compromise his drive, but he might have actually gained enough by going off the circuit. Obviously, you gain a little bit on the brakes, but you lose drive all the way down the straight. He has still got the lead for now, but we are pretty close to him as we go into turn three. Is he going to go wide again? Yes, he is, but then so have I a little bit. So we're not quite able to fully capitalise on it on the power then. Up the straight towards turn four in the slipstream. We are right there. We are right there. We're going to be able to make a move up the inside into this corner. I'm not confident enough to go for that. I don't want to completely wipe him out. It's a difficult corner to make a move in, and he's gone off the track anyway. 
so I think we probably would have just collided because he'd have braked later than possible, so we would have probably had a collision, but we're right on the back of him now through turn six. He's gone on the grass a little bit. We flick the bike over into seven. He's cut the corner a little bit. He's got to have some sort of penalty for that. I think you do get penalties for this cutting on the inside of this track, not on the outside, it seems, but uh, on the inside, I think you do get penalties. So we might be in a race winning position right now. I can't be too sure. Four tenths behind, though. He probably didn't pick up that big of a penalty for it. And the guy behind us apparently is uh, zero thousandths behind, but he's not. There's uh, just a bit of a uh, glitch with the gap there. But we've got a really good run as we go down towards the final corner. Of course, this is where he ran really, really wide on the previous lap. Is he going to do it again? As we go into the last corner, he's running a little bit wide, but not as wide as last time. But we're still going to try and get the cut back on him. But unfortunately, not quite having the bottom end to pick up the bike. 29-1, so we're like a second quicker than we were last time at this track. Obviously, we were doing th 1 minute 30s last time, and I'm doing 29s this time. So I seem to have found my pace a little bit at this circuit. But I really need to get past him. I've been sat behind him since the start of the race. And we are running out of time quickly to make this move stick. So in the slipstream once again down towards turn four. Kind of weaving to try and get it a little bit more. I absolutely hate that corner. It just gives me so much anxiety every time I go through it. That I'm going to tuck the front or clip the curb and crash. And we've got it too hot into turn five. That might be our chance at the victory over. That might be it. That could be it all, all over. We were really, really going to struggle to beat him anyway, but especially with that mistake, I think that might be Curtains. Into the last turn. I've tried to break as late as possible on the power as early as I can as we caught towards the line. We've just got to hope that we're within penalty range. We were very, very close. Have we done it? Rins looks happy. I have no idea. No, he didn't have a penalty at all. I don't know how he didn't have any kind of penalty. That is a little bit suspicious, to be honest, because he was off the track more than he was on it. But I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. We actually didn't get a win at all in this lobby, so a little bit of a disappointing lobby for me, but I hope the races were chaotic and you did enjoy them. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe, and I shall see you in the next one.